80. Wow. Oh, that is a big yellow foot. Wow. You said 20 years, huh? I don't know. At least. Wow. Got him. So. It's not, it's not always a happy ending, you know? Oh, it's not. We're kicking off the new year with a brand new adventure. You guys are coming with us. We're on the call once again to rescue some turtles and tortoises from an unfortunate situation. Here we go. Okay, we're here. The reason this is unfortunate is because this person's health has been declining and they can't take care of the animals the way that the animals need to be taken care of. So this person is doing the right thing. They reached out to us to get the animals in a position where they can be cared for properly and continue on with their lives instead of, you know, something bad happening or them going to the wrong place. So um, we're gonna go in and uh, we'll see what we're up against here. Um, I think we should probably take them last. You know, taking care of the pets and stuff, and it's just been a real struggle. You got to take care of you. Yeah, I you have to. It one, I, I'm telling you're you. Doing, you're doing the right thing. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah. 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 Let, let me do the work. Yeah, if you need to just, just show us where it. to go, you can yeah, sit. Let, go yeah, ahead. Seriously, let me do it. We got no light in here, I know, it's terrible. She's nice and heavy. Yeah. yeah I need to take this out. Okay, I great. Need it anymore. Right. And this is, um, this is Winnie. Oh, Malaysian box. box, very cool. Yeah. Hi. So, uh, she's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. She looks sweet. <laughs> she's been eating good. Yeah. yeah. Cora Ambonensis. Yeah. And I was feeding the pinkies all the time. Oh, you good. Know, and, um, Pinkies and, and uh, Reptimin. Reptimin? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Missouri and uh, the, um, what's the other one? Uh, Zumet? Yeah, Zumet. Okay. And this is the ornate. Oh, this beautiful. Is, and um, this is, and they're all healthy. They yeah, just slowed down great. because I had to pack them away because sure. it's just too much. Yeah. I know you can't keep certain species together of what I read on that. Yeah, I mean, it's okay for, you know, real quick, but... Yeah. About 80 years old. 80? He's got to be at least oh, 80 years old. You can tell by just looking at him. Wow. Yeah, when I got him, he was he was about this big, and now... Wow, that is, that is a big yellow foot. Wow. Yeah, and heavy, too. Yeah, absolutely. They're looking healthy, too. Wow. And he, he was my sweetheart. <laughs> he was such a sweetheart, and I've yeah. had him for so many years. And yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. He's yeah. been around. I had his. I had numbered on all numbers on all of them. Okay. Just in case they got lost, and he got lost once, and they brought him to a pond on the oh, road, geez. and I freaked out. Yeah. It was many years ago, and this wow. is freaky. And he, they all look a little dehydrated too, so be expect that because. Yeah. I put just packed Listen, them away. Listen, we we yeah. have seen uh, this is this nothing. Is nothing. I know you understand. Yeah, <laughs> this is I, this is wonderful. Yeah. yeah, this is wonderful. You can tell these animals are just really well cared for. You know, it's uh, um, it's a happy ending for them. They're they're really, I mean, rock solid. You know, we're really really healthy, and um, they've gotten to live outdoors in the warmer weather and then they come back in here for the winter and the winter only just started so it's a, it's a perfect time for us to to get these animals over to GST and get them set up and you know this is a breath of fresh air for us because you guys have seen on our channel how many times we come across animals that are just a complete mess and that's not the case this time you know these animals are clearly well cared for and very loved okay. this is the healer I think oh, wow. it's a healer it's a heel yep yeah healed healed and he's got his number on the back and he lived outside all summer too. Oh, wow. And he will bite only because he's looking for food like Otis. <laughs> yeah. The same thing like Otis. Yep. Do, uh, do any of your animals have names that you'd like us to keep? Um, this is Hortense. That's okay. the, the her man's. That's Little Joe. <laughs> Little Joe, I love it. Smiles, Je the general. The I had him for over 20 years. A boyfriend ago bought me him. And uh, oh, it's got to be at least 25 years, if not more. 
there and like, I lost track of time because I was taking care of so many things at once. And uh, that's uh, Winnie. And this is Greeky. My mom used to call that Greeky. Because <laughs> she had to keep it simple, you know. And what about the Yamaha foot? Is the Yamaha foot everything? Uh, no, it's for this butt. But and it's okay. AKA um, Goliath. A friend said, "Oh no, you got to name him Goliath." <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Cora yeah. Mahudi right there, or Mahudi Eye. So beautiful. You said twenty years, huh? At least. Yeah. Wow. At least. Did you raise it? From, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you did a really great job. Yeah. Everybody looks. Everybody looks fantastic. Everybody looks, fantastic. Everybody looks so great. This is something you definitely do not see every single day. This is the keeled box turtle, an Asian species, uh, highly coveted species actually, Cora mahudii, or mahudi, however you pronounce it. Um, really awesome animal. You guys might actually recognize this turtle as kind of looking like Lakai, our Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtle. Very similar in certain ways, but also, also very different. This is one of Asia's box turtles. It does have a plastral hinge so that it can at least partially close up, whereas Lakai, the Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtle, does not have that. And there's also vast differences in sizes. Lakai species will not get this big, whereas the Mahuti can actually get even bigger than this. So that's, uh, I wasn't expecting that. That's, um, a true rarity right there. And this is Melanie. This is my mom's favorite turtle. And I've had her, oh god, I've had her since 1979. No way, wow. Yeah, I think 1989. Oh, Now cow. she's light right now because she needs, she doesn't go in the water on her own much. She, okay. My mother kind of had always put her in the water. Really? But then she lived outside for right. the rest of the summer and just this year. And then she was fine, you know. And she would do it on her own? Yeah, she would go in the, on her own, but you could feel the weight of her is a little different than the others. Yeah, now she was that. diagnosed with um, eggs in her in here. Okay. And they wanted to saw her open at the vet's office. Oh my really? gosh. Excuse me. And um, she uh, I decided not to do that, you know. And she was so, um, so like, she was the sweetest turtle. She has a very shy personality. Okay. That's why my mom liked her so much, you know. Well, that you can, it's evident. They all look very, very healthy and <laughs> mm -hmm. happy. They do, yeah. Everybody's, uh, She's very bright-eyed, you can bright -eyed. see. Yeah. Does she, she have a name? Did you say her that's name? It's Melanie. Melanie, yeah, okay. I have it right here. I okay. I kept everything, my mom. Um, so I'm just gonna Dude. dig around and... You want me to get the shovel? No, no, no. no. I, um... I know you can get the shovel in place. It's so reassuring. It's the one that laid the eggs. Naturally. <laughs> but, um... Right. Unexpected, but... Hey, alright, here we go. That's, yeah. that's her. That's, that's the female. That's the female that laid the hatchlings. When they Beautiful them. female. Yeah, she's still, she wasn't that far down yet either. She had supposedly came from England. I don't know if any of that is true. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Tiger. It's Tiger. Big male. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. They're old. Chris, they're old. Yeah, I could tell, but you know. They live. <laughs> I know. Their lifespans are. Pretty insane. Okay, nice and strong. Beautiful turtles. Big, yeah. Yeah, they, they ate like, I would hand feed all of them. Got him. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> there he is. Oh man, I can't feel these fingers anymore. Okay, yeah, there that's you the are. Crowd. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Safe and sound. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. All right, Prowler. And I just try to give them the most natural life possible. You did. You did good. Like, did, really good. And I watched them. Yeah. And I was, my mom and I didn't sleep at night sometimes when we heard the yeah. raccoons and stuff. We're like, oh, no. It's not always a happy ending. I'm you know? telling it's you. It's not, you know, I'm but, you, but it's so this time it is.
So we've got several very healthy animals. This is uh, as emotional as this, as this is. Um, it, it's actually a happy ending. It, it really, really is. These animals are still in really good shape. I mean, the Eastern box turtles were hibernating naturally, and the only reason why we have to intervene and remove them is because they're not going to stay here. So, you know, I don't want these turtles waking up in this yard with new homeowners, you know. So, uh, we're going to get home as quickly as we possibly can. This has been a six hour round trip ride for us. And uh, I'm going to bury the Eastern box turtles right back down into our Eastern box turtle pens so that they can finish out hibernation and they'll just wake up in a new place and eventually get familiar with it. But uh, everybody else, we got to get home and get set up. All right, made it back home. So let's unload the animals, get them inside our reptile building so we could take a close look at them because it was kind of hard to really see everything down in that basement. It was dark down there, but uh, I'm pleased so far and I don't expect to see any surprises. Okay, <laughs> there's one surprise. You uh, you have to go back into hibernation there, buddy. This is one of the eastern box turtles that we had to dig up who is now active from being in the car. Um, we tried not to keep it too warm, but good news is we're dealing with a native species here and you know, they pretty much always know what to do and how to handle things. So let's do that. And actually, you know what? We're gonna bring these guys inside, but then I wanna come back out and immediately get these box turtles back into a situation where they can go back to hibernating. Um, because when you wake them up prematurely like that, you're asking for issues. All right, so this is one of the pens that's suitable for this species. So what I'm gonna do is um, make like little forms for them to get them set up to start descending again on their own. Again, the weather's a little bit mild. There's nothing frigid about today uh, or tonight. So the animals are safe to do what they need to do. There are people that move these things around purposely and actually go ahead and bury them. No, you have to let them do what they need to do. And then if they present a problem to you, that's when you intervene. These turtles were perfectly hibernating, and again, the only reason why we removed them is because of this person's health issues and because they have to leave this house. So um, that's what I'm gonna do, and of course, you guys know I'm a watchful eye, both Casey and I, on these animals constantly, so we're not gonna let anything bad happen to them. So, this is it. A Little bit of a form here. This is naturally what Eastern box turtles hibernate in. This is, uh, what did she say, uh, the Prowler. That's this guy's name, and you are already on the Prowl. This is great, though, that he's awake a little bit because it, is, it allows me to see just how healthy he is, and he's awesome. He's heavy, his eyes are bright, his nose is clear, he's muddy from already being burrowed. So you might not like this spot, but I know you will find one that you prefer. So let's see, he's probably gonna come right up out of that. That's fine if he wants to. Same thing over here. It's loose pine and leaf litter. Go ahead and put the female in here. She woke up a little bit too. Again, fantastic. Perfect health. But you know, she was keeping them in a natural manner. They had that entire yard to do what they wanted to do. And here, this guy's not really all that awake, so he might choose to stay put and descend. Okay. The prowler's on the prowl. I'm gonna give them a little bit of the earth and pine needles from where they were. Maybe that'll give them a little bit of familiarity there. And I will check on you, and both of you later, to make sure you're not doing anything that could harm you. So um, off to a good start. Let's check on everybody that we brought indoors. <laughs> Check on Maggie Mae first before doing anything else. How's our little cow? Maggie Mae! Hello! How's your hay? You having some chiefs? You got your chiefs hanging out? Showing everybody? What you doing? Yeah. Maggie Mae, our little African zebu calf, made her grand entrance in last week's video. And uh, you guys have had a lot of awesome things to say about her. 
She's got a couple more days in here before she gets introduced to our goats. And uh, super exciting, it's been awesome. The girls love her, Casey's in heaven having her. And she's really, she's transitioned beautifully, absolutely no problems. But we did, uh, we were out for six plus hours today driving to pick up these uh, tortoises and turtles. So I just wanted to make sure you were okay. And you are. Back to work. Oh, you walked right past our other cow. Here's our other cow, our shelled cow. I'm being pulled in a million directions. Hello, how's my wizards? How you guys doing, huh? Slow day, slow day in the office. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Rocky and blue, everybody. The rhinoceros iguanas. I'll come in there and spend some time with you guys in a minute. Here is the behemoth of this collection. She rode pretty well in this pet carrier. Not usually a way I would transport tortoises, but worked out pretty well. Man, you are a big yellowfoot. You really, really are. So we're told that this tortoise is 80 years old. I don't know, you know, how accurate that is, but this animal definitely is elderly. You can see old chips here and just the wear and tear to the carapace. Um, you know, something that you see on both animals in captive management and animals in the wild. And you're also going to notice some of the dry areas on her too. Her color would be a little bit more saturated had she been in um, more of a humid environment. This is a South American species, not unlike the red foots and cherry heads we show you guys a lot of on our channel. Um, these animals come from the Amazon basin and other areas like that. They live on the forest floor and uh, more dim lighting. They're not usually out in extremely sunlit areas, though they do venture. So this is kind of like South America's giant box turtle. They kind of have the same diet too. Very omnivorous, opportunistic eaters, and uh, they will eat both plant and animal matter. Really just an awesome species that you don't see too often, you know? They're, uh, they're not actually that popular. A lot of people stray from them because they're just a uh, uniform yellow or brown coloration. I think they're beautiful and every bit as awesome as the red foot, which is of course more popular. Now let's see. Yeah, you look good. You are heavy. You just need some humidity and hydration. Look at you. Bright eyed though. Just a little bit dehydrated. Nothing to freak out over. Okay, let's let you walk around. There you go. And this little girl, uh, this is Melanie. She is a female Florida box turtle. Uh, do you remember how old they said she was? I think she said 40, 40? and did she say 40 maybe? I don't know, she's, she's up there. You know, I mean, again, that's not really old for a box turtle, of course. Um, there's her little name tag. Very special to them. Uh, one of my favorite, actually, you know what? They really might be my favorite of the box turtles. Don't as tell far Otis. As, <laughs> as far as the species go. Otis, He's right there. Otis as an individual is my favorite, of course. For now, we're just gonna get her comfortable like everybody else and keep a close eye on them. You know, situations don't have to end bad for keeper and animal, they don't. It's why it's so important to have a plan in place and you really should have things set up for later on. Um, create a network for yourself. You know, this person realized they had a problem on their hands and before anything got too far with any of these animals, they reached out to make sure that they would get into a better situation. And that's happened several times this year alone, you know? So it's a happy ending for these animals. Um, and uh, to their owner, you know who you are. Thank you for trusting us with your beloved animals and for doing the right thing and um, we will certainly continue to update you on their progress. Know that your animals are in a safe forever home and um, thank you guys for watching.